Uh, so thank you all for coming here. I recognize uh, uh, my class, and I'm happy to see some other faces that are not in the class. So good to have a full room. I expect some people will probably trickle in. So uh, uh, all of you are probably here because you saw the announcement. Um, and of course, this is a talk from Eric Klein at NVIDIA, who graciously offered to come up from Santa Barbara today to do this talk. Uh, the goal of the talk, of course, is uh, you know, related to computer architecture, which is what this class is. Uh, but uh, what he said is that you know, there will be a question and answer session after the talk, and we have um, specific things that you're interested in. Uh, feel free to ask. And uh, he's very knowledgeable about that. I'll probably enlighten you at some level. So um, I guess without much ado, please help me welcome Eric from NBA. Uh, as Chris said, um, questions are great. Uh, stop me at any time with questions. I don't have a huge agenda. Um, you know, I, I've got slides and lots of whiteboarding to do. Um, but if you guys have questions, that's kind of more important than that. Um, so I guess I'll start off by saying I am not at heart a compute guy uh, in, in terms of GPGPU and, and all of that. I'm actually a graphics guy. Um, I work on the Mac OpenGL team. Uh, I'm one of the senior engineers working on the architecture of the Mac driver. Um, if you have complaints about the Mac driver, talk to Apple. If, 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 if you have praise, talk to NVIDIA. No. Um, uh, so I spend a lot of my time uh, working on the kernel part, uh, but the client as well. However, I've also worked pretty closely with the OpenCL team uh, for the Apple OpenCL implementation. Um, you can't work on the GPU and uh, a graphic, or gra graphics driver for the GPU without having a really good understanding of how the, the whole architecture works, including the compute pipeline. Uh, so I can talk a lot about the underlying hardware and how it works. Um, I can give you kind of a high level overview of CUDA and how things in CUDA work. If you have really detailed questions on CUDA, I can get back to you, but um, I'm not the guy to see for a tutorial on how to use CUDA. Um, that being said, I'll just dive in. Uh, oh, also I should say that these slides were written by uh, one of our, our uh, research guys, David Lubke, who uh, does a lot of research in compute evangelism. I've stolen pretty much wholesale from uh, presentations he does, because he does a lot of these presentations, and I'm more of a geek in the trenches. Um, so I'm probably going to power through his slides a little bit so that we can do questions and kind of some more low-level information about how the driver really works. Um, but if at any time you guys want me to take some more time, spend a little bit uh, more on, on something, please let me know, and I'll stop. Um, so kind of before you can talk about where we're at today with the graphics hardware, uh, you have to talk about where we come from. Uh, so obviously people have been thinking about 3D for a very, very long time. Um, a very long time. Um, it's, it's taken a long time to get to where we are. I mean, you guys probably saw you know, little CAD programs you know, showing basically this 10, 15, 20 years ago. Obviously, that was old then. Uh, actually, early graphics hardware started in the 70s. There was no such thing as computer science back then. I mean, there kind of was, but all the people doing this were mathematicians. Um, even computer hardware guys, like, yeah, whatever. It was mostly all mathematicians. And if you talk to anybody who's been around in computer science uh, and graphics for very long, they're all like, oh, yeah, we don't even know what computer science is. We all came from math. And you know, you hear about all these traditional graphics algorithms. All of them came from mathematicians. Um, and, and this was really pretty cool back then. Now we're like, eh. <laughs> All right, fast forward a long ways. Uh, in the 90s, Silicon Graphics started working uh, with dedicated graphics hardware. And, and op when OpenGL first came out, um, it, it, it was based around a graphics pipeline like this. And the basic idea was that you, know, you would send down a, a, a series of vertices and all the information for that vertex. So you, know, you would have position, uh, normal data, texture data, um, everything like that. Uh, all the stuff that would say what to, you know, uh, describing what this particular vertex in space and all the attributes about it. Um, pairs of vertices would be lumped together into a primitive. So you know you could do triangles, quads, uh, more complex polygons. Um, under the hood, the hardware pretty much turns everything into, into triangles, no matter what. Um, so. Anything else aside from triangles you do, there's some fancy stuff going on to turn into triangles. Uh, 
those vertices, before you turn them into triangles or anything else, we actually do all sorts of transforms on the vertices to get them into screen space and eye space and, and everything like that. So if you've taken any graphic classes, you've seen uh, matrix transforms uh, that, you know, you, you generally have a model transform that transforms your particular model into world space and then some sort of projection transform that turns world space things into screen space things. And I, I, I won't spend any real time on that, but uh, you know, that, that's kind of the key to here. Triangle setup and rasterization is after you've done transform and lighting work, uh, you'll actually be taking all of your, your vertices, turning them into primitives, and uh, clipping those, those triangles maybe into smaller triangles, um, and actually rasterization, which is the process of taking those final clip triangles and turning them into a ton of pixels. Uh, those pixels then get sent further on down the pipeline, where we'll do uh, texturing, any sort of fancy shading work, and I really want to emphasize that the early hardware had fixed function hardware for all of this. So that means that uh, there wasn't very much variability in what you could do, but you could do it really, really fast. Um, so you know there were special transistors on the chip that did only this and only this and only this. Um, and, and you know then on past this you've got your death test and blending and, and final frame buffer. And from the frame buffer there's specialized hardware that scans it out and sends it to the screen and so on like that. Um, again, I, I won't spend a lot of time on that, but that's your basic fixed functionality pipeline. Um, and that's probably up until about 98 or so, that's, this was it. This is what you had to work with. Um, and even until the early 2000s, this was what most people were doing. Um, so, you know, just kind of to illustrate, uh, transform and lighting, uh, you know, you, you take whatever is given, uh, from your, your model space and a world space and do any lighting calculations on that that you need. Um, texturing, so on like that. I won't belabor it, you guys all get the point. Um, so this is basically how hardware was set up. Um, and we were good at it. You know, we, we could do things a lot faster on this specialized hardware than you could ever hope to do it on the CPU. Um, you know, the, the CPU, I mean, you guys all know this, but the CPU is serial. Even if you've got like eight cores, each core is essentially serial. There's only so much you can do because you've got so much overhead on that CPU for branch prediction, for cache management, for uh, a lot of different things. And the GPU didn't have to deal with any of that stuff, so we could go very fast. It was like 90% math. Um, and so we could just fly through that. Uh, so this is just a layout of kind of what the, the early SGI chips were looking like. Um, uh, basically showing you that they follow this really closely. <clears throat> so as time changed, things got more programmable. This is starting, uh, I want to say around 2000, but don't take my word for that. It started to be that you could actually have shaders that were uh, no longer completely fixed function. You, you could specify a lot more what that transform would be. So you, you were no longer restricted to a transform to world view and then screen view. You could have any sort of transform you wanted now. You could do any sort of lighting calculation you wanted now, as long as it wasn't too fancy. You basically had to do the exact same uh, shader <laughs> logic for every single vertex that came through. <coughs> so you had to be clever. Uh, about you know what sort of lookups you could do. You didn't have access to textures here, but it was still a lot better than it was. Same thing with the pixel shader. You had access to textures, but not that many. You could do some kind of interesting things, but it, it was that you know you maybe could do everything you could do in about 128 assembly instructions, which was pretty primitive. Um, and then things started changing, right? 